Okay. Let's pay attention to the short video that is about to play. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. And the thing I want you to get from that video is to never, never, ever give up. Don't ever tell yourself that you are a failure and you can't do something because your Bible tells you in the book of Philippians that you can do all things through Christ. And so in today's lesson, we're going to look at JPRs. It's time to conquer JPR workshop. That's what we're going to be dealing with today. We're going to change that mindset that we are a failure when it comes to JPR and that we can't do JPR and we're going to conquer the JPR jitter, just as the man in the video did. And gentlemen, may I have your attention? The show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Go. I need everybody to shout, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Yes. And we can conquer JPR with the help of Christ. And that's what our focus today is in this lesson. We're going to be conquering JPR. Anybody remembers what JPR stands for? Type it in the chat. Type your answer in the chat if you remember what it stands for. JPR. What do the letters J? P R stands oh. for students. Begin to type your answers in the chat. Keep your mics mute. Type your answers in the chat. JPR, what do those letters stand for? Now, if you were thinking judgment for J, personal, for P, response for R, then you are correct. JPR stands for judgment, personal response. In other words, you're reading that statement, you're judging it, and you're going to give a response from your personal perspective. It's not an argument or a debate. It's your personal perspective of the matter. So let's take a look at the rules for JPR writing. What are the rules for JPR writing? Three simple rules to remember, boys and girls. Let's pay attention as they come. Step one, always plan your JPRs before you write. A lot of times students read a JPR and they jump right into writing it. No students, you want to always plan before you write. If you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Once you plan your ideas, writing is easy. So always take about three to five minutes to plan. Think about what you would want to talk about and write a plan. Step two, use your plan to write. Once you've written your plan, 
don't ignore it. The reason why you took the time to think about your thoughts and to write them down as a plan is so that you can use them once you begin to write. I've seen it so many times where students would have written a very good plan, but then when it came time to use that plan to write their response, a lot of them don't know how to do that. You know how to not only write a plan, but you want to use that plan to write your JPR response. And lastly, read over your JPR. Read it over no matter how confident you are in what you have written, always take time to read it over and make sure that your responses are not only listed, but explained. Many times when I look at students' JPR, I see where they have listed a scripture, listed the Bible story, or listed a reason, but did not take the time to explain it. Not only should you list the reason, but you should explain it. For example, I would see some children write, one of the reasons I agree is the Bible story, Ananias and Sapphira. And then they go on, another reason I agree is because of my mother. In both cases, the person only listed the reason. They didn't explain. They didn't explain what about the story of Ananias and Sapphira or what their mother said or did that makes them listed as a reason. So remember, one, plan your reasons first. Two, use your plan to write. And three, read over your JPR and make sure your reasons are not only listed, but explained. So whether it's a scripture, like you, you may say a final reason I agree is John 3 and 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That is listing the reason. Now you have to explain, connect that scripture with the JPR statement itself. Are we good so far, boys and girls? Excellent, let's move on. Now that we know the rules for writing the JPR, let's look at planning. Planning, a lot of students do not know how to plan. A lot of students do not know how to plan. So hopefully this workshop today assists you in writing a very good plan. Now, when you're writing, we don't expect you to, to say everything there is about that particular statement. When you are planning, remember, you only need three reasons. How many reasons do you need, boys and girls? Three, that's all. Three reasons. You don't need four, you don't need five. However, if you can only come up with two reasons, that is just as good. Just make sure that they are very clear sentences that explains your thoughts. So three reasons is what we teach you, but if you can come up with two, that is just as good. So let's look at these three reasons. What should these three reasons be based on? I promise you boys and girls, if you follow this JPR plan, you will always get a five or above in your JPR. Ensure that you have reason one, where you summarize the Bible story. What should reason one be based on boys and girls? Very good. A summary of the Bible story. So whatever the Bible story is, you want to summarize it. And a summary is just as they, th they taught you in language. You don't open the book and write a summary. You have to read the book first before you can write the summary. All right. Let's look at reason two. Does anybody remember what reason two should be based on? Let me see how many of you remember. Write it in the chat. Reason two should be, and remember, even, even though we're teaching it to you this way, it's okay to swap the reason two with one. You can do it either or. or. Reason two, is a personal reason or a modern day. It's based on a personal story or modern day. And remember boys and girls, writing is not only based on the real, but also on the imaginary. Even though the JPR is asking for your personal response, it does not mean 
that your response is based on something that happened to you. It could be based on a story you read, a song that you know, something your mother told you, your Grammy. You could even say it's something that your pastor, something that your pastor preach in church. And if you cannot come up with a reason, I always say, make it up. But you should never leave your personal reason or modern day story blank because that reason can be made up. Nobody knows what church you go to and what they preach in your church. Nobody knows what your religion is. Some of us are Christians, but some of us are also Muslims and Hindus. So those religions teach something different from Christianity. So your values may be different. So remember, you can make up the personal reason if you cannot think of one. And lastly, reason three. Anybody remembers what reason three is? Write it. And I always say, leave your biblical reference for your reason three, your last reason. And here's why I say that. Your biblical reference requires more thought because this is not something like the personal reason you can make up. This is something you have to think about. You have to think very carefully about another scripture that is different from the Bible story that has something to do with that JPR. And let me give you a hint, boys and girls. If for any reason you're in the exam and you cannot think of a specific biblical reference that relates to the JPR statement, you can write any scripture. And that's why I always say, come into the exam knowing at least one or two scriptures. John 3 and 16, is something that we learn from Sunday school. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We should all know that. Many of us would have heard Jeremiah 29 and 11 again and again. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And then we have Philippians. You can use Philippians. I can do all things through Christ. And if all of those fail, you have many, many Biblical scriptures that you know from growing up. Scriptures such as the three Hebrew boys that were thrown in the fire, Daniel in the lion's den, Noah, Ark, Jonah and the whale. Any of those Bible stories can be a biblical reference. So there is no reason, boys and girls, that you should go into this end of year exam and not complete your JPR and get at least five points. Your JPR are an easy way to pass your exam. So there you have it, your three reasons. Reason one, summary of the Bible story. And we begin that reason by saying, one of the reasons I agree is, or, or if you disagree, one of the reasons I disagree is the Bible story and write it. All right? Now, when we do reason two, we don't say another reason is a personal reason, no. We say another reason I agree is if it's going to be about your pastor, you say my pastor, full stop. If it's a movie, you say a movie, full stop. If it's a book you read or a song you heard, you will say another reason I agree is a song I heard. The minute the examiner reads that it's a song, something somebody told you, something you read or a movie, they know that that's a personal or modern day reason, okay? Excellent. Any questions thus far? Just type them in the chat. Take a minute and look at the plan. Remember, three reasons. And you can always switch up your reasons if you want to. That's fine. Long as you have those three reasons that are based on something from the Bible story, something more than day or personal, some biblical reference. Excellent. Let's move on. Now that we know how to plan our JPR, let's look at writing the JPR. Let's look at writing the JPR. When we write the JPR, again, just some simple steps, three simple steps. Step one is you must have an introduction. Students, your introduction and your conclusion are an easy one point that you do not want to lose. You always begin your introduction by saying, I agree or I disagree 
with the statement. Write the statement out. Whatever the statement is, write it out. All right? Step two is the body. The body is where you will find reasons one, two, and three. So remember, you're not only listing those reasons, but you are also explaining them. Sometimes explaining may require you to give an example or share a scenario that can happen, okay? So you want to explain, make sure those sentences are explaining. And then reason, then step three, you must conclude. Your conclusion could be as simple as, for these reasons, I agree, or for these reasons, I disagree. As simple as that. And just write out the statement. Any questions so far? Are you getting this? Excellent. So this is just a refresher's course. Now let's practice what we have just learned. Are you ready to practice, boys and girls? And let's see how well. So I need your participation. Get ready to write in the chat. Let's practice. Now, here's an example of a question from the exam. Sometimes the exam will have question one. And question one will have three parts, A, B, and C. Take a minute and look over those questions. Question A says, what did the younger son do with his inheritance? Question B, explain why the younger son made the decision to return home. And C, children should always obey their parents. Do you agree with this statement? Give reasons to support your answer. Now, let me say something. In your exam, and even during BJC, they always give you a series of questions and then the JPR. And the reason why they give you those series of questions is because those questions are from one of your, your topics. And that topic that you were taught would be where you would get the Bible story from for your plan. So let's practice. We're gonna do a plan for the JPR. Children should always obey their parents. I want you to get ready. I'm gonna give you two minutes. And I want you to go to the group chat and I want you to write your plan. For those of you may have, who may have forgotten, here is the plan. Reason one should be a summary of the Bible story. So reason one, the Bible story. Reason two, I want you to write what is gonna be your personal reason. And for reason three, your biblical reference. What biblical reference would you use for this JPR? What Bible story is this JPR based on? Look at the questions to help you identify the story. And third, what biblical reference, what other Bible story can you use or what other Bible scripture can you use that talks about children obeying their parents? So I'm gonna give you two minutes. Let's go to the chat and begin writing your plan now. Let's go boys and girls, you have two minutes. You're only writing the plan, just the plan. Reason one, what are you going to talk about? Reason two, what are you going to talk about? Reason three, that's it. Remember Lamont? A, a movie is a modern day um, or personal reason. Remember I said that a personal reason can be based on a movie, a song you know, or a book you read. Okay. All right, let's get back to work. Get 
get those on in the chat. Boys and girls, that's the time. Now let's see how well you did, and then we can do it together. Then we can do it together. Okay. Here's how we would do this plan. For my reason one, I would put prodigal son, prodigal son, because that's the Bible story, prodigal son or lost boy. Okay, I'm not good with this penmanship. So on my plan, I would put prodigal son, because that's the summary of that story. Prodigal son, I would just write reason one and put prodigal son. And for my personal reason, I would put my mummy. Someone to talk about something with my mummy, tell me. You can put your mommy, your daddy, your pastor, say your pastor preached something, any, anything, maybe a movie you watched, but I've put my mommy. And for biblical reason, you could have used um, the Ten Commandments, because that's one of the Ten Commandments. Children obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Okay, you could have used the Ten Commandments as your biblical reference. Ten Commandments. Another one that you could have used is Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. I think it's Ephesians chapter three, where it says, honor your mother and the father for this is right. You can use the book of Ephesians three. And let me tell you, boys and girls, if you know the scripture, but you don't know where it's taken from, that's fine. You don't have to say Ephesians chapter three. If you know it's Ephesians, you could just say Ephesians. Or you could say the Bible say. If you don't know, like with the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments is in the book of Exodus 20. But if you don't know that, you could just say the Bible say or the Ten Commandments. Another one is the story, if you remember the story from your grade seven curriculum, Boy Jesus in the Temple. That was when Mary and Joseph went to Jerusalem for the Passover. And when they were heading back home, they thought Jesus was with them, but Jesus, did, Jesus stayed behind. He didn't even ask their permission. He stayed on his own. And it took them three days. They, for three days, they went around looking for Jesus. And they found him in the temple. And when they found him, he was like, didn't you know I must be about my father's business? Jesus didn't even care that they were worried. And the thing about it is somebody could have steal him. Somebody could have kidnapped him. 
So boy Jesus in the temple, that can be used as a biblical reference. So there you have it. Any one of these scriptures you could have used for your biblical reference. Um, for my personal reason, I use my mommy. You could have used your pastor. Uh, if you wanted to, you could have probably used a friend. Maybe something happened to a friend. Okay. Well, it, de it, it all depends on whether you would be agreeing or disagreeing. Okay, boys and girls, so either of those could have been used, all right? And that's a simple, that's a simple plan. Reason one, prodigal son. Reason two, my mummy. Reason three, 10 commandments. Or I could use any one of those biblical references that I shared. How did you do? Rate yourself. Now, if you didn't get that one, we're gonna do another one. So let's get ready. Get ready to do another one. Let's practice another one. So it's fine if you didn't get that one. Okay. Stop that. Let me just erase. Good. Now let's practice another one. Here's another question. Again, the exam will give you a few questions and then the JPR. So here we have, explain the meaning of the terms eunuch and conversion. So you would answer that a eunuch is a castrated male and conversion needs to be changed. Now B, list four facts about the eunuch. He worked for the treasurer. He was Ethiopian. He was castrated male. And then C, preaching the gospel is not an easy task. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? Give reasons to support your answer. Again, here is the three reasons. You need a summary of the Bible story, personal and biblical. So let's begin that plan again. I'm gonna give you two minutes. Go into the chat and write your plan now. Let me see how well you do. We're gonna conquer our JPR fair. Sorry. Now let's see how well you did on your own and then we can do it together. So let's see what your ideas were. And remember when we write in the group chat, I'm the only person who is able to see your message. 
No one else can see your message. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Very good, Lamont. That's the Ethiopian, the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. But remember, if you're looking in your textbook, you will not have your textbook during the exam. So you have to learn to identify the Bible story on your own. So let's do it together. Let's do it together. All right, for my reason one, uh, it would be the Ethiopian eunuch. Because that is the Bible story. That is the Bible story. So my reason one would be the Ethiopian eunuch. For reason two, hmm, preaching the gospel is not an easy task. I would put my pasture. I would go with my pasture. Because basically all of us have a church and we can relate. Okay, we can relate. My pastor. Okay, he had an error there. Pastor, pastor should have an R. And then for reason three, biblical reference, I'll put John the Baptist. And you have other biblical reasons you could have used, you know. Another one that I could have used was Paul. Paul at Corinth, that's a Bible story. Another one could be Peter. And there are so many. We could talk about Daniel. We could have used Noah. Also, we could have used the three Hebrew boys. Any of those references could have been used. So there you have it, boys and girls, on how to plan your JPR. Now, rate yourself. How well do you think you did? Go into the group chat and tell me, what do you give yourself? A five, a four? Come on, five out of five, five being the highest, one being the lowest. What do you give yourself? Rate yourself right now. <laughs> okay, remember five is the highest, Lamont. Lamont said he gave us, oh my goodness, Amber. Amber, what's the matter? Well, we're going to place this video. Don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube page when the video goes up for other videos. You'll be able to play it again and again, and that's where you can strengthen it. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to practice, not a read practice, how to do the JPR. Here's what I want to do. I want to practice writing the JPR, writing the JPR because writing the JPR is so easy. So let's look at writing the JPR before we conclude today. So my first reason was Ethiopian eunuch. Remember we said the first step is to write your introduction. So let's look again at how to write the introduction. Whether you are agreeing or disagreeing, you should begin your, your introduction by saying, I agree if you agree, disagree if you disagree, the statement, comma, open quotation mark and write the statement. Preaching the gospel. This is how you should always write your introduction. Is not an easy Task. And remember, just for writing your introduction, you're getting a point. And then you go to the next line. Remember, we teach you to intent and go to reason one. My reason one, I said, is going to be a summary of the story of the Ethiopian eunuch. So I'll begin by one of the reasons for reason one, I agree, is the Bible story, the Ethiopian eunuch.
E-U-N-U-C-K-C-H. And then I put a full stop. Now I need, I listed the reason. The reason I listed is the Ethiopian eunuch. I should not go on to my second reason. Can anybody tell me why? Yes, because I have not explained. I list, but remember Mrs. Evans said to explain. So now let me explain. And my explaining should be a summary of that story, the Ethiopian eunuch. So I'll begin the next sentence by saying in the story, Holy Spirit told Philip to go on the Gaza Road. While there, he met the eunuch. I'm given a summary. Who was reading from the book of Isaiah. Philip explained by preaching to him. He believed and was baptized. And that's a summary of the story. Then I can go on to reason two. And I want to begin that by saying another reason. I agree is my pastor. Now, after I say my pastor, full stop, because I listed the reason. Now I'm going to explain. What did my pastor say or do that says preaching the gospel is not easy? Okay, my pastor. He has to do everything, almost everything. church. He drives the bus, cleans the church, pays the bills, and still has to preach sermons. He has a wife and children to take care of but he's dedicated. He said, what makes his job hard is when he preaches and people don't believe or change like the eunuch believe and change when Philip preached to him. And there you have my reason two. And lastly, I'll do reason three. Are you getting this boys and girls? I hope this is making you more confident with your JPRs. Reason three, we'll begin that by saying a final reason. And I want, to, I want you to notice how I'm beginning these reasons. Please feel free to begin your reasons the same way, okay? If you can begin it the same way, then that will help you to succeed, okay? A final reason is John the Baptist. 
And you guys remember from that story, John the Baptist got beheaded for preaching the gospel. First he got in prison and then he was beheaded. John preached against the marriage of Herod and his niece, Odious. This caused him to get locked up. eventually beheaded. So preaching the gospel is not easy because sometimes sometimes people hate you. like they did John the Baptist. So do you see how I explained, boys and girls? And that's what you need to do. Can anybody tell me what I'm missing now? The only thing I'm missing, ooh, wow. I miss and erase that, is my conclusion. I'm so sorry, but I can't write that back. So the only thing I'm gonna write is my conclusion. Remember the conclusion is simple. Your conclusion should simply say for these reasons, I agree if you agree, disagree if you disagree and write the statement. Preaching is not an easy task and that's it. Voila, it's finished. And there you have it, conquering the JPR. That's all you have to do. Very good, thank you so much. Somebody realized that I didn't have my conclusion. Excellent. So there you have it, boys and girls. There's our lesson on JPRs. And I hope that because of today's lesson, you are more confident and ready. So feel free to pause this video to play it again and again so that you too can be more confident and stronger with writing JPRs. If you have any questions, boys and girls, you can begin placing your questions in the chat group. Thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube page so that when further videos are posted, you can receive those notifications. I will continue to put up tutorials to help prepare you for your end of year exam as was with the live worksheet. Thank you so much, boys and girls.